Joined now by Christina Corp from Winter Park, Florida. She's known as the Astronaut Wrangler and is a space advisor. Really good to have you with us, Christina. Firstly, this wasn't the launch that Elon Musk and SpaceX had been expecting. Luckily, it was an uncrewed flight and it was just a test flight. But in your view, what have they achieved with what they've done here in Texas? Well, first of all, to launch this huge rocket, the most powerful rocket ever, is a huge achievement, even to get it to the stage that it got to, because there's never been this powerful that has been uh, launched to, and, and they were hoping to get it to orbit, and it didn't get there. But even getting to the point that it got to was a huge uh, leap into the next missions to go back to the moon on Artemis. Well, that's right, because uh, this Starship spacecraft is designed to not only go to the moon, but also Mars and, and possibly beyond. Tell us more about the aims for this uh, particular rocket. Sure. So um, for those who don't know, Artemis are the next missions to go back to the moon. Artemis, twin sister of Apollo, goddess of the moon. And so in the next few years, we'll be sending humans back to the moon again. And so we need a rocket that's powerful enough to escape Earth's gravity. You need to go at least 17,500 miles an hour to get into orbit. You need to go 25,000 miles an hour to leave Earth's orbit to go on to the moon. So what's exciting about this is not only is SpaceX a commercial company, they do have NASA contracts. So it's not like they're completely separated from NASA, but it is most likely to be the rocket that will take humans back to the moon, both to orbit the moon and to land on the surface of the moon within the next few years. Yes, and in the meantime, before it's prepared to actually send astronauts to the moon and perhaps to other places, the initial plan is for Starship to launch satellites into orbit, uh, perhaps to help fuel uh, Elon Musk's uh, Starlink internet satellite system. But how soon do you think after that will uh, Starship be crewed? Well, the hope is to have it crewed within the next year and a half. Um, uh, recently, NASA announced the Artemis crew, which is four astronauts and the first woman to go orbit the moon. And so chances are that rocket is going to be Starship. Uh, it's not ready for humans, as you see. This was a test launch and the first time they've actually launched the entire stack, meaning the multi-stage rocket. It's super, super powerful. And, you know, a lot of people are reporting, oh, it blew up. Well, they blew it up on purpose because it didn't separate the first stage. And so they learned something valuable from that. And in the meantime, I don't think they'll be sending uh, as much of the payloads of satellites at this point. They do this very successfully with their Falcon 9 rocket here in Florida. There's at least one rocket launch a week. Uh, by far, SpaceX is way ahead of everyone else in the world in terms of rocket launches. But this rocket is way bigger than the Falcon 9. So that's why this is still considered a huge success, because of the amount of engines are, that are within there. So we've got to do a lot of these tests before we ever put humans on them, and even cargo that people are paying a lot of money for. So that's why this is considered a success, because at least the first stage was very, very successful and didn't have any problems. Uh, it's the separation to get the second stage going that we, we need to get them to fix at this point. I'm sure all eyes will be on the next test flight, whenever that may be. Christina Corp, thank you, as always, for your analysis. Thank you so much.